G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. And a few of you might recognize where we are. The reason we're here is I want to show you how you can add the script that Rich27 sort of rewrote for me that allows you to have pirate bases gradually encroach their antenna range, which means their spawning range, until it hits your own base. And the idea of this is over time you will start getting attacked with drones from each of the enemy bases in your area. The way this script works is it randomly adds a small value to the antenna range until it reaches a maximum. Then it hits that maximum and resets back to the default range. The reason I wanted that feature added was that I didn't want it to be constant attacks. I wanted some variability and rather than having it be completely random I thought this would make it feel more like pirate waves of attack. So you'll get a sequence of attacks from one base and then it'll hit its maximum range, it'll reset and then you won't get attacked from that direction anymore. So unless you're prepared, you may not be able to fight, to fight off and figure out exactly where those bases are using their attack direction. You do still get their antenna marker so you probably can figure it out anyway, but the idea was that we'd mainly get waves of attack, not just constantly hounded from every direction once they get into range of your base. I wanted those little periods of reprieve. So what we're going to do is first, since this is a survival world, we're going to click Alt F10. We're going to enable creative mode tools. This option will only be available to you if you have spectator mode enabled on your world. What I did before I loaded up the game was I went to advanced, I went down here and I turned destructible blocks off. It's important to turn this off so that any enemy drone spawns that happen when you're modifying the bases don't actually do any damage to the base because you probably don't want that. What we're going to do after we turn enabled creative mode tools on, we're going to go down to admin tools, we're going to select invulnerable and can use all terminals. This will allow us to access the pirate bases without any problems. Then, from Cycle Objects, select Biggest Grids. We can go to our first, but let's not do the Pirate Headquarters first since it's a bit more complicated. Let's go to... yeah, this base will do. Press F8, and I can now control this camera. I can then go below the ground, and I want to go the, below the ground because this is a way we could set up these bases for every single one. What we're going to do is we're going to add programmable blocks to our hotbar as that is the only thing we're going to add. If I press control space, I will teleport here. I can then turn my jetpack on so I don't fall through the world. And I can then place a programmable block on the bottom of this tower. If you're designing your own bases or if you're fine revealing the internal layout of the base that you're modifying, you can just place this inside. I'm placing this underneath so that I don't get to see what's inside this base and so that I don't reveal it before I show it in my survival series. So now I can right click on this programmable block and I want to first off transfer it to the Space Pirates. Click yes. And now that it's owned by the Space Pirates, it will work properly. If you don't set up this ownership property at the start or before you compile and then save your game, compile the script and then save your game, everything will stop working. And then you're gonna get frustrated. The next thing we wanna do, and before we start editing any scripts, is have a quick look at what the names of the antennae are on the base. For most of the default vanilla bases, there will be two. There'll be an antenna and there'll be a marker for the beacon. The antenna will be named something that does not have any spaces in it. So we can see here there's Space Pirate Mining Operation Site. There's no spaces in that one. That is the antenna we need to remember the name of. So if we go down here, we can click on this. And my preferred way is just to select that all, press Ctrl C, and now we can go to our script. So if we click Edit, Browse Workshop, and then this script we're going to use is called Pirate Raiders Spawning Waves. Click OK. Now, as noted here, this script was written by Rich27. I made an attempt to write a script to do this sort of thing. It worked. It wasn't pretty. 
So I spoke with Rich and he's basically rewritten, well, he's written, written, rewritten the entire thing. It's sort of designed by me because I did want to do this, but I couldn't have done it without him. So thank you so much. He's got some other scripts on the workshop and he's done some amazing things to help me out in my series. So I just wanted to point out that he did all the work. Now, on to how to set up this script. There are a few values up here that we need to set up, but before we get to them, let's rename this bit here. So this is where we can paste in our string from before, and now it says mining operation site. So we don't need to remember anything or deal with anything below this point for now. What we want to look at first is our time interval. So this is how often the script will update the antenna. What I like to do, what I'm going to do to show you guys how this script works is we're going to set this down to one second. That's not ideal. This will make the antenna range change a lot, change very frequently, which is not really what we're after, but it's useful for the demonstration. Next up, we've got our antenna minimum range and our maximum range. These are important. The maximum range is that point where once we've added and added and added range to our antenna, once it reaches that, it will then reset back to our minimum, thus providing those waves of attack rather than constant attack. The amount that's added each time to the antenna range is here, and it's a random number between these two values, so you won't know exactly how long it's going to take until you could get attacked by this base. And what I would recommend so that you get a rough idea of when it will happen is do some maths and calculate the minimum time, which is the maximum increment, how many times it needs to run times the time interval you've set here and the minimum. So that you'll have a rough window of say between an hour and four hours or five minutes and 10 minutes, just so that you know and so that you can get a feel of what might be best for your particular base or your particular setup. What we're going to do now is just leave this exactly as it is. We're gonna click check code, okay, remember and exit, because I figure demonstrating this is going to be much more useful than me talking through it. And if we click on our mining operation site here, you can see the antenna range is increasing and it is increasing by a random number between 50 and 250. It's gonna keep going up every second until it reaches that 15,000. We can make this happen a little quicker if we increase those amounts. So let's click edit. Let's turn this to 1,000, oh, 1,100, sure. Check code, okay, remember and exit. And now, when we go to mining operation site, it's gonna change much more quickly, potentially. Sometimes randomly, it'll be quite small changes. And sometimes randomly, it'll be a big change, but it'll be somewhere in that margin. And you'll see that it's about to reset. There we go. So because one value was over 15,000, the program checked that, saw that it was too high, and it reset that broadcast radius back down. For the survival maybe scenario, what I want to do is have this range just barely cover over the hunting cabin so that the attacks from this base will eventually go toward the hunting cabin. And it's 16.43 kilometers away. So let's set this up properly this time. We'll click edit. If we want it to just cover the other one, let's make this maximum 17,000. But we want these attacks to happen pretty rarely. So let's increase this time interval to every two minutes, which is the default setting that I've got in this code. Then what we're going to do is we're going to decrease this maximum increment down to 250, again, back to the defaults. And now we can think about how long it might take between waves. So if we've got 250 as our maximum distance change each time, and we've got 12 kilometers between our minimum and maximum, that would mean that we have 48 increments at least between the minimum and the maximum. And did I calculate that right? 12, 12, yeah, it should be 48, I think. I'll see. So 48 times this two minutes. So that leaves us with 96 minutes. 
So 96 minutes is our minimum time between attacks. The maximum time between attacks will be five times that. So it'll be almost 500 minutes. I can't quickly do that. Is it 480? Yep, it is 480. And it's also important to note that this is the maximum time between attacks because the antenna maximum range is just barely over our home base. That's a very long time. So it'll be somewhere between that 96 and that 480. If you want to make that a tighter window, just put the minimum increment and maximum increment to something closer. Then we simply click check code, OK, remember an exit, and it's all working. The mining operations site antenna will gradually change. We can, however, make things a bit more interesting because this is a scenario to start out in and you won't have any means to protect yourself for a while. Why don't we make it take even longer until the first attack happens? So let's drop this broadcast radius down and to open up a value like this, you just click control click. Let's drop this down to a thousand. Now on the first run through, it's going to add to a thousand and it's going to take even longer to get up to that range where it will attack our base. So the first attack is going to take much longer than the next one because the next reset will jump ahead to 5,000 meters. So we gain that extra four kilometers in range before we run into a, a problem of getting attacked. And I think that could be a nice way to set up all of the antenna on the enemy bases around here so that they all attack us much slower to begin with, but eventually it'll be a more consistent attack from each direction. The next thing I want to show you with this script is one final function that was added by Rich27, which is here. If true, the antenna increments before resetting. So that is, it'll go up to the maximum and then reset. If false, it just sets a random distance. That could be fun, because then we really don't know when we're going to atta get attacked. It could happen anytime. Anytime at all. Let's test this out. Let's just set this to 10 seconds. And let's set this to false and see how it plays out. Check code. OK. Remember an exit. And now if we go down to our mining operations site. Every 10 seconds, in theory, it should randomly pick a value. And there we go. 15,000. In another 10 seconds, we'll go to some other random value. We would have no idea when we're going to get attacked. This could be a great way to set up things for using this script on a base for Meridius 9's planetary installations mod. Because that mod has bases spawned anywhere, this would mean we could get random attacks see the attacking vehicle, but then the antenna will disappear, so we won't know exactly where that base is. So we'd have to gradually figure it out from the direction that these enemy drones are coming from, which I think could be a really, really cool function. You could have both some with the waves, some with the random, and this script works perfectly in that mod. I have tested it already, and I will be doing another video showing you how you can build your own base. That is once I've come up with a design for that base. How you can build your own base, how you can add it to that mod, just like the cargo ships mod, and how you can use this script to make that base so much more dynamic. So what I am going to do is I am going to add this script to all of the bases in the survival maybe start scenario. I'm going to set them up so that it takes a long time before they attack your base. You need a good couple of days setting up at that base before you could really protect yourself, particularly as you have no uranium, you're going to need to protect your solar panels. So I don't want to make this so hard that it's just grueling and cruel. I do want to try and find that fun balance. If I'd been able to write this script at the start, I would absolutely have had this at the start of my series. It just adds so much more interest to the world. If you've got any questions or any tips about how you might use this script, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear them. And if you'd like to check out this scenario once I've added all these scripts to it, just head to my workshop as it's in there. And as always, there is plenty more to come. So I'll see you then.